pounded bark. Wow. Way cool. Kalinga. That's oh, Kalinga now, yeah. Hmm. Balita na Islaktog, a Kalinga weaving story, written by Renalyn Albert and Annalyn Salvador Amores, and illustrated by Danielle Florendo. Balita na is the granddaughter of Apu Dumla, an old weaver in the village of Naning Kalinga. Balita na lives with her parents in Manila. Balita Nai first hears about her Apu Duna one summer day when she was eight years old. Balita Nai's mother says, Let us go back to the Ili, our village. My Auntie Dumla told me that there is Inanchila Festival. Let us visit our relatives and have our fill of the rice cakes. I have not tasted Inanchila for a long time. Our grandmothers make them. And they are delicious. Balita Nai's almond eyes are round with excitement. Rice cakes? My favorite! Her mother shows her wrap-around skirt with laktob designs to Balita Nai. I cannot wait for you to meet your Apu Dumna. She made this for me when I was your age. She tells the best stories. Balita Nai rushes to her room and starts packing her new dress so she can wear it to the festival. She wants to show Apu Dumla her favorite story character, a superhero printed on the dress. Balita Nai's family rides the bus for 10 hours from Manila to Kalinga. When they reach the village, Balita Nai is enchanted with the rice fields. Everything here is green, she quips happily. Mama, what are those tiny huts for? asks Balita Nai, referring to the century-old Agamong. Those are really old rice granaries, Balita Nai, her mother answers. Older than me? Balita Nai asks. Yes. Older than you? Yes. Older than Apu Dumla? Yes, 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 yes. Her mother laughs. When they are near, Apu Dumla hurriedly stands up and leaves the backstrap loom that she had been working at for days. Apu Dumla waits at the door and greets them. Welcome home! The smell of brewed coffee and hot inanchila embraces the weary travelers. Balita Nai enters the old house of Apu Dumla and sees the sticks and threads lying on the ground. What are these, Lola? She asks. Oh, those make a loom, Balita Nai, her grandmother says. A loom? wonders Balita Nai. Yes, a loom. That is how we make our clothes. The grandmother's weave. We call it Sinon, explains Apu Dula. The next morning, it's the Inanchila Festival. The children and their parents join the parade. The men wear lanlan, and the women wear wrap-around skirts. Apu Dumna shows Balita Nai a finely woven skirt. Would you like to wear a lakto? I finally finished the one I was weaving. This is for you. Balita Nai does not even look at the skirt her grandmother made for her. But Lola, I am now wearing my new dress. That is fine, Balita Nai. Apu Dumna slowly folds the laktob. In the parade, Balita Nai notices that everyone is wearing traditional clothes. Mm. My neighbors are all wearing the laktob. The next day, Balita Nai looks at the skirt woven by Apu Dumna. She runs her fingers over the laktob. It is beautiful. She whispers in awe. She touches the threads that her grandmother used for the skirt. They are fine and smooth. 
she wonders how the tangle of sticks and thread could produce a lovely skirt. Apu Dumba sees Balita and I looking at her room. She sits next to her granddaughter. Balita and I bows her head and says, I'm sorry, Lola. I did not wear the skirt you made. Apu Dumla pats Balita and I's shoulder and tells a story. A long time ago, our people could not get any clothing to cover their bodies. The early Kalinga discovered a tree called Torak. Its bark has a soft texture once it was pounded well. Your great-great Lolos took the bark of the tree, bit and chewed on it, removed the stiff parts, and dried the bark. He then put the pieces of bark together, twisted and shook them, until they turned out to be like pieces of cloth. I kept your great-great Lolo's loincloth. Here, have a look. This used to be the bark of a tree? Balita Nai wonders aloud. Yes, Balita Nai. After your Lolo learned that the Torak bark could be transformed into a cloth, the people found a tree called Alinao. These are small trees with thread-like fibers that were used to mend the dried bark of Torak. Your great-great Lola used the wider bark as skirts for the women, while the small and long ones were used by the men. Balita Nai says, Lolos Lan Lan! Apudumna nods and continues her story. We were able to get some threads at the market when we traded with the lowlanders. Some of our women learned how to weave from nearby towns. Your Lola Dula taught us how to use the backstrap loom when we were small. When the American missionaries came, the young women learned how to do embroidery. They took their mother's woven cloths and embroidered them with flowers, birds, and plants. They embroidered kalapoy or butterflies, pakoy or rice, and even gayaman or centipedes. Oh, they captured butterflies and centipedes and put them on the clothes? Balita Nai mm. exclaims. Yes, Balita Nai. The designs are beautiful and our Ili Nanang is the only place where you can find woven clothes with these kinds of embroidery. Mm. But sadly, only a few master weavers remain and the young ones prefer to wear ready-made clothes. Balita Nai sees the pride and sadness in Apudumna's eyes. She stands up and wears the laktob her grandmother made. For many more summers, Balita Nai always comes home to her grandmother's village. She always wears the skirt that Apudumna wove for her. One day, when her laktob no longer fits, she hides it away like a treasure and utters a promise. Apudumna, I will learn to do the sinon. Oh, that's such a great story. Did everybody do the tree bark? Yeah, pretty, uh, from what I've been told. Because hmm. that's like, especially, that's like the first thing the kids are going to use. Hello, I am Daniel, you know. and I am the illustrator for Balita Nesakto. I started my career in children's book illustration after I received my bachelor's degree in fine arts. When I was approached by the Cordetex project, I was given the opportunity to choose what story to take, and I particularly chose the Kalinga story. I realized how important it is to preserve our culture. It's a part of us, it's a part of our individuality, and will always be part of our identity wherever we go. That's so cool. I wanted to be very particular and I wanted to be very specific when I was illustrating this story, especially on the textiles. When I was studying the textiles, I realized how intricate every single strand and every weave was. So in my watercolor illustrations, I made sure I could translate that properly into paper. So thank you Cordetex Project for this opportunity 
and I hope that you enjoy but it's a nice night. That's a great story. Man. Yeah, the the whole the thing with bark, um, it's you know readily available, so a lot more folks would use that. You know, especially as their everyday one. Uh, what I was told, because especially like the depends on like how many weavers you got in your area, and if you can even get one. <laughs> you know, like uh, the stuff that you see now is almost like the tuxedo of 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 oneness, right? Of bag. <laughs> So like you know the every a lot of people would wear the uh the bark ones especially as their first 